I was born in El Salvador uh, in the year of 1976. So my dad was not uh, in my life as much, more than um, my early four years in my life. Um, the only thing I know is that when I was born, he desired a girl. And therefore, he rejected me. So you will see a picture of me where I am actually dressed as a girl. At that moment, I, I don't know what's going on because since I'm a kid, I'm innocent. I just, I just know I like to play with, um, with other girls. I like to um, play with dolls. I like to play with uh, many things that are more inclined to the feminine than the masculine. So there's a moment that it's just flashes in my memory. And I, th I think I'm four years old or about that time because that's at that moment my father is still living with us. And um, I'm dressed with my mother's gown and playing with her, uh, with her heels. And he found me and there was a big discussion and as a kid I went to the closet and I remember crying in the closet and there was a big fight so my father became alcoholic and my mom of course that kind of bring a lot of uh, fighting until my sister was born four years after me so therefore, um, that was also when uh, El Salvador civil unrest started in 1980s. And uh, every male was being compromised or called to be uh, part of the war. And therefore they have to either belong to the war or come to the United States. At that moment, that's when my father left us. and. Uh, I actually started being raised just by my mother and my grandmother. For some reason, there was a neighbor that it was older, and he uh, wanted to say molest me now uh, because he asked me always to play with him. So whenever I feel that loneliness and somebody asked me to be with him, um, I kind of went alone and that's kind of started my awakening of my sexuality. Uh, at such an early age, I think I was seven years old to eight years old, I don't remember. Um, but that's when I start kind of discovering more of a sexual, which I didn't know I was sexual. And in the innocence, you're just looking for someone to protect you or to be with you. So I went to that route since not all my adults were with me at that moment. Then uh, we have to move to the city. We moved to the city uh, at the 10 years old uh, to San Salvador. And uh, I remember that we moved with my uncle and that house was um, uh, filled with so much uncertainty because we didn't have a home. My mother didn't have a home, uh, but my uncle received us. So we stayed there for a year until my mom kind of purchased a home and we finally have a home in San Salvador. So this is from 10 years old until I was 17 years old. We live in that home and that home was so full of love and you know, innocence and playfulness and loving and caring. Uh, that's how I perceive it. Uh, but my brother, on the other hand, was not perceiving that form. Um, actually, the babysitter or the caregiver um, kind of molested him. Um, therefore, I actually saw that uh, in the middle of the night and because we used to share the room and I didn't know what to do so she asked me not to say anything to keep it secret 
uh, but I couldn't. I have to tell her my mom, and I remember that kind of devastate my mother, and that kind of felt all that crumbling again, all the loneliness again, all the nightmares again. It's just so hard. So I remember at that time um, I was already 14. So I went to, I guess, the group of friends to look for that comfort. And, and at that time, I think everybody's just, I'm discovering sexuality, everybody's discovering sexuality. So we start playing around with other boys, with other kids. And uh, it just kind of felt a little bit of comfort, but it wasn't fulfilled. It wasn't what I was looking for. Um, so then um, I tried to figure it out, to figure it out to how to connect to my father, thinking my father had some answers, some ways to what I, what I am that I am, what I feel this way. And I remember talking to my mother and I wanted to know where my dad is or how to connect because they have not talked to each other since he left in 1980s. For some way, somehow, I actually connect with him. I actually, he called home one time, and I was so happy, I remember. I was so happy he had called home, and he just wanted to talk to mother. And they talk, and uh, that's when the process of, or the dream to come to the United States started with that call and they have to talk. I remember going to bed and I didn't know what they talk about it, but I remember the next day they, they were trying to reconcile themselves of their separation since 1980s to 1984. So when my dad later on come to visit, um, uh, he wanted to be a male figure a male, uh, a father, but he did not earn it. He did not earn it. So there was a lot of rejection from all of us, and there was a lot of fighting in the house. There was a lot of... Oof, functionality and that hurt me so much because at one point I thought if I have a father I would not be this way I wouldn't have these desires so I turned into religion then to figure it out myself because I could not find answers why I'm not this way. So hurtful to walk in the world and not feel belong. That nobody is really listening or paying attention to you. So I went through the process of ask forgiveness to God for the way that I am, and that I, I will not do it again. I will not have sex with a boy again. I will not do it again. And I will keep that process and fail again, and I'll do sex again, and I feel so ashamed, so guilt of myself, over and over. <sighs> 